Hi, I'm Katie from New York. Before I tell you my story, please like and subscribe. My aunt said my parents had an accident when I was a baby. And since then, I've lived with her and my cousin Lucy. But you never guess another kid lived in this house. All the wall frames had pictures of just aunt and Lucy. Lucy had the biggest room bursting with toys and books. Lucy had so many clothes, she had another room as a closet. And me? Well, I lived in the attic with her hand-me-downs. But I didn't care. All I ever really wanted was for Aunt to love me like she loved Lucy. So I did whatever Aunt asked me. I served her breakfast in bed, polished her shoes, painted her nails, but somehow she was just never happy. Once when I was 10, a new neighbor came to visit Aunt, and she <gasps> looked awestruck when she saw me. What a beautiful child! That gorgeous red hair and those adorable dimples! Adorable? <laughs> They're just dents in her face! Stop smiling, Katie. You look like a moron. Go get us tea. I went to the kitchen, spat in Aunt's tea, and gave her the cup with a very serious face. There. But soon after I turned 13, my whole life was transformed. One day at breakfast, Aunt was going through the mail when suddenly she spat out her cereal. Just then, I saw the letter she was reading had my name on it. Hey, what's that? But Aunt had already jumped off her chair, and she threw the letter in the fireplace. Why'd you do that? It was mine! I saw my name! And who would write to you? You didn't see anything. As she stormed off, I couldn't help thinking, who would write to me? A few days later, the doorbell rang and a postman was standing outside. Express delivery for Miss Katie? Suddenly, a flying figure pushed me aside and attacked the postman. Oh my god! Aunt! I tried snatching the letter from her, but she was off with it like a bullet. What the freaking turtle? What was she hiding? I was dying to find out, but the letter stopped coming. But one evening, when the bell rang, Aunt ran to open the door, and standing outside were two bodyguards with a wealthy-looking man. Can you explain what happened to the letters and plane tickets I sent for my daughter? Wait, what? Just then, the man spotted me, and his eyes welled up. Oh my god, you must be Katie. You look exactly like your mother. I I'm your dad, sweetie. Dad? You're my dad? Why didn't you come for me before? He tearfully explained that he and mom had gotten divorced before I was born, and she told him never to get in touch. He found out just recently that mom had an accident so long ago, and he tracked me down. As we hugged tight, I turned around to aunt. You made me think he wasn't even alive, and why were you keeping the letters for me? Because you don't deserve to go live like a princess. You should be my maid after everything I've done for you. You've used me all these years. Used you? I did everything you ever asked, just so you'd love me. Did you ever love me at all? Even a little? No, how could I? You're like a toothache that just never goes away. That's what I was? Dad told me to pack my things immediately. But before going, I made sure to rub Aunt's toothbrush inside the toilet. Then I took Dad's hand and left without even saying goodbye. We flew over to New York, and I was shocked at the size of Dad's mansion. And my room was five times bigger than Lucy's. This was freaking awesome! As Dad was showing me around the house, hmm. I suddenly saw a tall woman staring at me coldly from a distance. Dad was married, so that must be my stepmom? Mary, there you are. Come meet Katie. But Mary just turned away and slammed the door behind her. Later that night, I walked past their bedroom to hear Dad and Mary talking in loud voices. It's her first day here, Mary. Think how unwelcome she must have felt. What about me? You just expect you'll bring a child home and I'll start loving her like she's my own? I crept away without hearing any more. Great, another mom figure who already hated me. When I went down for breakfast the next morning, Dad greeted me with a smile and so did Mary. Sorry, Katie, I wasn't feeling too well yesterday. I hope you slept well. Yeah, as if she cared. When I asked Dad for the orange juice, Mary quickly got up to pour it for me and she dropped the whole jug in my lap. Oh my god, what are you doing? I'm so sorry, it, it just slipped from my hands. I know you don't want me here, but you don't have to be so petty. With that, I stormed off. Her whole innocent act was fake, and she proved me right soon enough. A few days later, I was walking over to the sofa in the living room when suddenly, I tripped over something. I went flying straight into this weird statue, and I stared at the wreck in horror. Mary leapt up angrily from her armchair. Oh my god, how could you be so clumsy? Do you know what that's worth? Just then, Dad burst into the room and behind him were some guests. What happened? We heard a loud crash. 
Oh, honey, Katie broke the statue by accident, but thankfully she's not hurt. Dad looked really upset but stayed silent. I couldn't stop myself, though. You were just shouting at me, but the minute Dad came in, you became an angel? What? No, I was just shocked. I didn't mean to shout. Stop acting, Mary. You just want me to look bad in front of Dad. I, I think you tripped me up with your leg. What? You little brat, how dare you? You must have tripped on the carpet. That's enough. In case you both forget, we have guests. Kitty, please go to your room. I walked off angrily and slammed my door shut. I didn't trust her one bit. Dad got me enrolled in school soon, and I felt nervous walking into the huge building. A few kids were looking at me, and I smiled, and suddenly a bunch of boys were surrounding me. Oh my god, can you do that again? Um, do what? Smile, please smile again. I did, and all the boys just stared at me. What was wrong with my smile? Those dimples are so freaking cute. I could just look at them all day. Wow, these dents in my face? Boys like these? Just then, a girl pushed through the crowd. Get away from her, you morons. You're scaring her. Hi, I'm Veronica, and I don't have a redhead in my group. You look nice and rich, so we're friends now, okay? Well, she wasn't really giving me a choice. I was part of her popular girls gang now. I love my new school, but it started bothering me really soon that Veronica could be rather mean to other kids. I tried to tell her a few times, but she always said she was only joking. But then one day, I walked into the cafeteria, and I saw her and her friends making fun of a kid on crutches. Hey, Limpy, what would happen if I took away one of your legs? And with that, she pulled away a crutch and he landed hard on the ground. Veronica, are you crazy? He's already hurt. Why are you bothering him? Oh, come on. We're just joking around. But it's not funny. You're just being a jerk bully. Hey, no one talked to me like that, tomato girl. She pounced on me and pinned me against the wall. I pushed her back and she went crashing straight into the chemistry teacher walking by. He dropped all the bottles he was holding, and the vile smell of chemicals had everyone gagging and running out of there. And Veronica and I got suspended for a week. Dad would be so disappointed. When I went down that evening to tell him, he wasn't in his study. But I found freaking Veronica poking her nose through his things. She just picked up a pen and put it in her pocket. What are you doing in my house? Your house? You live here? Since when? You're interrogating me, you thief? Put that pin back right now, or else. Or else? What does that even mean? I leapt at her, trying to reach her pocket as she fought back and screamed. Suddenly, we were pulled apart by Mary and another woman. This witch attacked me! She's the one who got me suspended too, Mom! Katie, Veronica is my guest. Her mom and I are friends. What's going on here? I guess I just have better taste in friends than you. I brushed past her and stormed off. Of course Mary was friends with awful people like herself. A few days later, Dad was away on a business trip, and someone quietly opened my door at midnight. To my surprise, it was Mary with a hand behind her back. What? What do you want? Um, your dad told me it's your birthday, and I just came to say, well, happy birthday. She stepped forward with a cake with candles on it. I never had a birthday cake before. I thanked her awkwardly, and she sat down on the bed. Katie, I think we got off on the wrong foot, and I'd really like to start over. Maybe we can get to know each other better? She looked really sincere, and I wondered if I'd judge her too quickly. Yeah, I think I'd like that, Mary. We started hanging out more, and I found myself actually liking her. She took me to lovely cafes, shows, and galleries around New York. She had the best taste in clothes, and shopping with her was so much fun. And soon after Dad returned, Mary threw me the most amazing birthday party ever. It was the best day of my life. A couple of months later, there was a dance in school, and I had been asked out by this new boy who had all the girls drooling. That evening, I wore a gorgeous dress Mary had picked out for me. She'd even done my hair and makeup. I received so many compliments, and my date just couldn't keep his eyes off of me. We were slow dancing to a song when suddenly, someone pulled the back of my dress really hard, and I heard the fabric rip. Oh. My. God. I turned around in horror to see Veronica grinning and holding part of my dress but everyone was staring at my back at a long, ugly scar. I had had it since I was seven, when I fell down the stair once. Look, Marcus, look at that disgusting thing on her back. It's like she's freaking Frankenstein. Suddenly, I leapt forward and slapped her hard. The only monster here, Veronica, is you. I ran out in angry tears and got into my car. I didn't care if anyone knew about my stupid scar. 
But the only person who could have told Veronica about it was Mary. She'd seen it when she was helping me try on a dress one day. I burst into the living room and started screaming. How could you be such a witch, Mary? You almost made me believe you cared about me. Well, what are you talking about? What happened to your dress? Veronica ripped my dress because you told her about this scar. Even dad doesn't know. I only told you. And you thought it could be something you'd tell Veronica to use against me? You're the most horrible person I know. You're even worse than my aunt. I hate you. As I cried furiously in my room, dad came in and hugged me. Sweetheart, there must be some mistake. Mary wouldn't do this. She would. She did. No one else could. Don't defend her, dad. Just don't. If Veronica thought I was going to be embarrassed and hide, she was so wrong. I went back to school the next day, expecting weird looks and comments. But what happened left me shocked. The principal walked in during the first lesson and said, The entire class came to me this morning to complain of an incident at the dance yesterday. And there is no way that I will tolerate this kind of behavior in my school. Veronica, you're expelled. As Veronica stared at her in horror, the whole class erupted into cheers and applause. This totally made up for everything. And when I got home that afternoon, I heard screams from the living room. It was Veronica's mom. No one had been spying on Katie. Your stupid maid saw her scar one day and told us. And so what? My daughter played a harmless little prank and now she deserves to be expelled? Her entire future destroyed? All because of that stupid, disfigured, red-haired witch? Don't you dare talk like that about my daughter. And with that, Mary punched her. Get out of my house. You are not welcome here, ever. As the butlers let her out and she went screaming, Mary suddenly saw me and I started to cry. I'm so sorry, Mary, for thinking it was you. I, I've had a hard time believing you could really care for me. I heard of you the first day. You said you couldn't love me like your own. And I guess I've been scared to love you in case you didn't love me back. Oh, darling, I said that, yes, because I couldn't love you right away. It was also new for me too. I've never been anyone's mom, but I've tried so hard to get to know you and love you. And I really do now, Katie. I love you. You're my daughter as much as your dad's now. I love you too, mom.